Okay, hello again. Next project is the cooling system. So I got some of it mocked up here already. This is the uh, um, yeah, that's what it is. This is uh, <clears throat> 304 stainless inch and three-quarter tubing. I was able to get, uh, you know, straight lengths of tubing, 45s. These are T's here. One there. One there. Another one there. 90-degree elbow there. Anyways, what I'm doing is I'm mocking this all up and taping everything together. And then I got a friend of mine coming with that uh, can TIG weld, and he's going to TIG it all up for me. Uh, I just can't get my wire feed welder to work properly for some reason. I don't know what's wrong with it. And um, it'll look better TIGged anyways. So <clears throat> I don't have any TIG equipment. So um, that's the uh, that's what we're going to do. So uh, this is the, uh, let me see, this will be the hot water out. And this is going to be the um, the fill. And there's going to be a header tank up in behind that aluminum panel up in there. I'll video that a little bit later once I get that done. Um, silicone hose here. And uh, and again, I've got it all just taped. Ow! Oh, it's hurting my knees. All taped. Can't really see that, I guess. To the bottom of the radiator or the, you know the radiator outlet there i'm just going to work on this upper one here join it up to there and then i'll start on the other side and i'll do the the uh fill and uh, overflow tank last so there we go one more later all right so i've been a little bit lax on filming this but it's all put together here now it's all mocked up um, just has a stuff to uh, you know take it all apart here and and uh, and weld it up um, so as soon as my buddy can do that then uh, we'll get that done uh, now I have to um, start on in closing these radiators, so the radiator um, compartment here in aluminum, so that uh, so what I'm going to do, I'll show you the rate, the fans in a minute. I've got big electric fans that pull uh, 6,000 cfm. I got two of those, so I pull 12,000 cfm. They are going to mount. Um, on an aluminum panel here and I gotta enclose this to the aluminum of uh, the, the radiator so so this is that's a sealed compartment in there so the uh, fans can pull pull through it so that's what I gotta work on next uh, hang on and I'll show you the fans okay so there's one of the fans fan assemblies that I'm going to use Got another one of these for the other side, so it'll be four fans in total. Pull uh, between the four of them, though, like I say, they'll pull 12,000 CFM. I'm hoping that's enough. Uh, they are 12 volt, so what I'm going to do is wire them in series to uh, so they'll they can run on 24 volt. So. Uh, a positive and a negative here one from each fan and then the positive and negative uh, will go to power and ground that'll turn it into 24 volt just like a basically the same as a set of batteries um, I, it has a uh, this is the uh, temperature the control sender or control unit for it 
Uh, what I'll do is I'll wire this. Typically it wires directly to it, but because this is 12 volt and those are going to be 24, I'll run it through a relay again. And, um, and then uh, this will be able to control the temperature um, like it should, in theory. So we'll see how it all works. So that's what I'm getting working on now. All right, this is my coolant recovery tank or expansion tank, header tank, whatever you want to call it. Um, started out life as a, an aluminum air tank, air bottle. Um, so I have a weld-on red cup, which will go there. That'll be the fill. And then I'll run a overflow off of that. And this will be the fill to the engine. And we'll weld that on uh, right like that. Just a little bit of uh, downward angle toward the engine. And, uh, and then we'll, um, and then there's a, uh, an air bleed line that needs to come up on, that's all just on the top of the engine. And um, I'll uh, plumb it into here. The water level at the most will ever be right about there. So it'll leave a, you know, a little bit of air, a gap at the top for that bleed. And um, I'll knock this uh, handle off here. Won't need that. Uh, mount it through the to that bracket here on one end and I'll have to build a bracket here. Um, that is going into this compartment here that I built many, many long months ago. And the end of that tank will go through and I'll cut that little hole in there for the end of the tank to go through. And, um, and then the radiator hose will go from uh, there to that line there. And that line is going to have to be lower than that. So I'm going to have to think about that a little bit. Anyways. Yeah. <clears throat> That line there is going to be too high, so I'll have to rotate it down. But that's easy enough to do. Anyways, that's why we fit things first. All right, and I'm a little farther along in this cooling system here now. The uh, tank is done, installed, um, and uh, I've run the motor up to operating temperature a couple times. Uh, all the Obviously, all the welding's done. Um, everything's all hooked up and uh, no leaks, so that's good. Run it up to temperature uh, a couple times. I don't have any fans in here yet, so I just was watching the temperature. It takes about, I don't know, from cold, almost 45 minutes at uh, high idle before it finally gets up to 195 degrees. So it does a pretty good job of cooling just with the, uh, you know, just water running through the radiator even without uh, even without a fan on it so obviously it's not under power so but uh, still anyway it's uh, coming along I'm just working on the uh, uh, well on the other side right at the moment just enclosing the uh, uh, radiators so I can mount the fans so I think I'd mentioned that earlier so that's what I'm working on so I'll uh, video some of that once I get to uh, something accomplished over there okay so here's where I got to today uh, I got the bottom framework all made uh, and the upper yep, one section of this lower aluminum here on the bottom of the, the floor and 
that upper piece mocked up into place. So there's going to have to be a seal in between here, the radiator and the aluminum there. On those three sides, I've already got it on the bottom. Um, and it'll have to be sealed right along that joint there. And you can see there, to run some sealant in there. And then, so tomorrow I'm gonna close in these two sides. Right in from, from there to that piece there. I don't know if it really shows very well. Here, let me back up. Yeah, I don't know, anyway. From the from this front piece here to that back one there on both sides and uh, that's all got to be sealed and then I'll put the uh, piece on the back to mount the, the fans on so we'll see how we make out tomorrow okay so I got one piece locked up in here Uh, it fits pretty good. I don't think I'm going to take it back out or anything. I'm just riveted it in place, but I'm just going to leave it like that till I do the other side and make sure that it's, uh, you know, it's all okay. And then I'll uh, rivet it all in and then uh, coat it afterwards. Then I got to go in. And, and uh, I think what I'm going to do is make up a piece of angle here. And uh, just have a piece of rubber come up and, and rest against and sit along that edge to seal this seal this edge here up in here. I think that's what I'll end up doing. So on to the other side. Okay, back again. So. Got the, uh, all of the outer uh, framework around the radiator done now. I just have to fill in this uh, two side panels here, this gap here. Um, and um, I'm doing that with a piece of angle that I made up. And I'm going to use this rubber seal here and um, I'll rivet this aluminum, well, bolt the, the or rivet I guess, the uh, rubber to this angle and then slide it in here and uh, rivet it, you know, just let the, the rubber sit here, seal up against the, uh, the edge of the radiator. Uh, this is going to be a little bit tricky up in here because uh, it's angled, but I got the rubber cut at an angle as well, so I'll just start fitting it and see how it works. Should be good. So there's what it looks like. It's the one side in. That rubber uh, just sits there and rests against the edge of the radiator, seals it. I'm just uh, getting ready to do the other side, cutting pieces. All right, so this one is done. Of course, the second attempt always works out. It's better than the first one, but so it's up nice and tight. All the way, well, the other one is too there. and But it's nice up nice and tight up here too. Whereas this one is a little bit short, so I'll have to put a little bit of sealant in there to seal that one up, but it's no big whoop. Anyways, the only thing left to do on this one is the fan. I think I'll build all this same structure on the other side first, and then do the, uh, the both of the fans at the same time. So over to the other side. And as it's gonna be the same procedure, I don't think I'll bother filming it, no point. Um, once I get the other one done, I'll uh, I'll just um, uh, video the, the the fans. But the uh, no point in video in both ra both radiators. 
they're both exactly the same. I decided to do a quick little shot of this side going, the driver's side going together. Well, two side panels are just clamped in right now. There's the lower pan made up. And, <laughs> no, I'm talking to you. And you're ignoring me. Uh, anyways. Just going to put the pan, lower pan on and then start riveting it all together. Alright, both radiators are shrouded in now. Did this one a little bit different than the other side. Um, the other side I have to run... Uh, yeah, that's what I got to do. My uh, uh, heating uh, ducts for the for the bedroom have to go across over top of the radiator, so I had to do that one a little bit different than than this one. This one is uh, I just went straight up um, to the to the top there. So that's all done. Now I'm just uh, working on the mounting the fans. So if you want to hang on for a second, yeah, so the furnace ducting needs to go across uh, above that radiator and the uh, vents will go up through the floor right in right in there and one on the other side so that's why this one had to be done uh, a little bit different and I think I showed you the fans before there's the framework and everything I'm got to build to mount them on I'm gonna Decided to inset them. I was originally going to mount them right here, but uh, when I actually put them up into place, that uh, the fan ended up being pretty close to this um, frame here, and I was uh, concerned about it uh, restricting the airflow. So I moved them in five inches. So that's what this this uh, here is. So they'll be in in here, and the other side will be the same. So, just mocking that up now. Uh, I'm gonna hope the uh, cooling lines are all back on. I just have to uh, tighten up the hose clamps before I button this up. Paint the inside of that radiator, just to freshen it up. Same with the other one, the other side. And then uh, let's give this thing a try. All right, so here's another little update I got the uh, cooling system filled <coughs> finally got the one radiator or the fan mounted the challenge that was was way more than what I was anticipating just trying to get that thing to, to seal was just a my first attempt didn't work and so anyways took me almost pff, I don't know three days to build that you know enclose that and get, and get the fan mounted and working which is way more than I was anticipating but anyway it's done now and it works nice and uh, so what I'm gonna do you know now that I kind of figured out what what will work I'll just redo the or you know reproduce it on this other side over here on the passenger side and um, so uh, you know, shouldn't take too long. <laughs> Famous last words. Anyway, uh, ran it for, I don't know, the engine ran it for about an hour and a half yesterday. <clears throat> and uh, for now, I've just got the fans get on a jury rig for power. And I just uh, ran it up to temperature and uh, then hooked the fans up and uh, ran them. And I cooled it right off just with the one. Of course, it's, you know, just sitting here at high idle it's not under load working or anything but it moves a crap load of air so I think it'll be just fine anyways at it, back at it so controlling these fans has turned out to be a little more problematic than I was hoping these uh, controllers that they come with which are 12 volt 
and I'm trying to run these at 24 volt if the fans um, <clears throat> what I did here and I thought would, would work was run the uh, that controller just running a relay so that's all 12 volt and uh, just went to, to a relay that uh, turns the fans on but the problem is that those things don't are not instant on instant off they're they ramp up and ramp but down and when they do that it just cooks that of the relay so that's not gonna work if they were the old style or they're just instant on instant off it'd be fine but they're not so I have to uh, come up with another plan for controlling them um, <coughs> they work really good they pull the crap out of air I think I already mentioned that but um, controlling them I'm gonna have to do that with uh, probably what I'll probably end up doing is getting a um, a screw in um, temperatures in there for here and um, and then I'll um, just have that control a couple of relays and uh, well they'll come you know I think they they're uh, on at 180 or 185 and off at uh, off at 170 those uh, screw-in controllers so I'll get one of a couple of those and uh, use those I guess because these things aren't going to work. They do what they're supposed to do, but in this application, it ain't going to work. <clears throat> the other option would be to uh, switch it all to 12, over to 12 volt, but because I don't have a, really a 12 volt, I just have, I have that buck converter, and I don't really trust that buck converter to pull, you know, to run that many amps, so I don't really want to do that. So, I think we'll get a different system, but in the meantime, the fans themselves work awesome. <laughs>